I'm honored to bring, uh, bring Dr. Kunmung Chung to us, who's the former Minister of Science and Technology uh, from the Republic of Korea and the former president of the Korea Power Engineering Company. Uh, Dr. Chung is an internationally renowned nuclear engineer and science and technology educator. He's currently the director at Energy Strategist Consultancy Limited and serves as an advisor to the Korea Electric Power Corporation. He previously served as Minister of Science and Technology in South Korea, President of the General Conference of International Atomic Energy Agency of the UN, and Chairman of the International Nuclear Energy Academy. He's held positions on faculties in the United States, uh, Korea, and France. Uh, and Dr. Chung is a is a member of the international is a charter member of the International Nuclear Safety Group and a fellow of the American Nuclear Society. So please welcome Dr. Chung. Thank you very much for your kind introduction. And uh, I'm really honored to be here because uh, uh, this is a really historical achievement, CP1. And uh, we know that how important uh, that was. And we admire Enrico Fermi and his associate who did this pioneering work. Now, my talk will be uh, just focused on the industrial side. Why? Because uh, as Dr. Uh, Winkley mentioned, um, in 1953, President Eisenhower made uh, a historic speech. No, could I use now? Okay. So when you want to say, when you want your next slide, just say next slide, and we'll advance it for you. Oh, can I use? Okay. Just no. say next slide, yeah. Next no, slide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> On Tuesday, December 8, 1953, President Eisenhower made this speech, Atoms for Peace. Now, remember, in 1953, our country uh, was just after Korean War, nothing. We had almost uh, nothing left after three years of war. So we are looking for the way of uh, developing our nation. And uh, Eisenhower said, experts would be mobilized to apply atomic energy to the needs of agriculture, medicine, and other peaceful activities. A special purpose would be to provide abundant energy in the power-starved areas of the world. Well, at the time, we, uh, we didn't have energy uh, source, so this speech really inspired us. However, we didn't know what to do. In two years, Argonne National Lab had Argonne International School of nuclear science and engineering. Next slide, please. Uh, we sent some of our young uh, scientists and engineers in the hope that we'll find the way to develop our nation. Well, uh, in the, uh, as you recall, <clears throat> international Atomic energy was formed, as Eisenhower promised, and uh, Korea, at the time, not a member of the United Nations, became a charter member of IAEA. Why? Our president on the right, 80 years old, almost, uh, well, at the time, 75, but uh, he was looking for the way of developing the nation. And the Walker Sisler, the uh, uh, CEO of Detroit Edison, came 
with a pellet of uranium, saying that this will give you the energy if you use brain uh, resources of your country. So President Lee said, Korea will build the nation through education, science, and technology. Brain resources would be the key for Korea. Well, he meant it, and uh, he uh, went on to uh, develop this. The next slide shows uh, uh, the history. We, uh, after becoming the charter member, we promulgated atomic energy law in 1958, and then we set up Ministry of Atomic Energy in 1959. I graduated myself, the college, in 1959, and uh, I joined uh, the ministry. And uh, the minister who was standing beside the president, uh, Dr. Kim, I became his assistant. And uh, uh, he told me that, don't try to be as a, a PhD, or well, look for uh, as a career of a scholar. Look, our country doesn't have any base. So you have to sacrifice yourself to bring up our scientific and the technological capability so that the next generation of uh, uh, our brains can do work as we can see in the United States or United Kingdom. So uh, I came to the States 1960 in near this area uh, because uh, President Lee arranged the scholarship at Michigan State University. Well, uh, I got my uh, degree and went went on to uh, uh, do my uh, work as a researcher in uh, science and uh, technology. However, I never forgot what Dr. Kim, minister, uh, told. In the meantime, the Korean nuclear power program went on. The next slide shows some uh, uh, major event. First, our country set up first five-year economic development plan. Korea Electric Power Corporation was set up. And then, 64, President uh, uh, Lee's uh, uh, plan was implemented by President Park. Uh, first site evaluation and the selection process carried out. 66, we got first sight Kori, which is a small town near Busan. Then the Ministry of At Atomic Energy became Ministry of Science Technology. And the uh, Atomic Energy Commission and the Nuclear Safety Regulation were under that ministry. 68, we set up 20-year development plan for nuclear electricity and uh, we uh, opened the international bidding for the first MPP. Westinghouse provided the winning bid to Tulu Westinghouse PWR. Well, uh, we started our construction in 71, and uh, we joined MPT in 75. The first a nuclear power plant is Kori number one, which is uh, what which costed about three hundred twenty million dollars. Uh, At the time, our per capita income was two hundred ninety dollars. When I see president in African nations or ASEAN nations, I I tell them we had our uh, commitment 
And even we are poor, we went on to get this energy uh, project. Well, uh, uh, Kori number one served 40 years. Design life was 30, but uh, uh, life extended 10 years. And uh, last June, we retired the Kori number one. We went through phases of nuclear electricity development. First phase was in 1970s. We introduced nuclear power. We constructed the first uh, nuclear power plant on turnkey base because we didn't know how to design, how to construct, how to operate. So it was turnkey basis. But after energy crisis in the 70s, I happened to write a paper saying we got to have technological self-reliance. So we went through first localization of parts on component basis. Then we made a major decision. At the time, we had a Canadian reactor, French reactor, Westinghouse reactors. But we decided to standardize. Well, uh, many people were unhappy because they said, if we standardize, financial uh, plan will be very difficult. However, we convinced, convinced the government that we have to go technological self-reliance and we follow uh, the way to develop nuclear power further. International bidding was held and the combustion engineering system AD and AD plus became the reference design. I still remember Frank Beveliquio who was a, a CTO of uh, combustion engineering he told me, he said, U.S. market is going down, but this uh, system AD is the best one, and uh, if you push this, focus on this uh, uh, power reactor, you will be able to really develop your nuclear industry, and uh, combustion engineering will not spare anything, will give you entire technology. For 10 years, he, he did it. And uh, we uh, uh, developed Korea standardized nuclear power plant, which became optimized power reactor, 1,000, one gigawatt size. And later, we went back to the size to 1,400. That became advanced power reactor, 1,400. Well, we continue to develop APR 1400 as generation three nuclear power plant. At the same time, we, we know that there will be need for SMR, so we uh, uh, designed SMART, and the SMART was uh, 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 given design certificate for uh, NRC. Well, uh, the f uh, important thing in 2010s is the export of Korean MPPs to UAE. Nobody believed when we talked about export to all producing nation, our power reactors. They said uh, I was joking, but uh, they meant it because they needed, they went through techno-economic analysis and they said uh, uh, UAE needs a, a nuclear power. So uh, 2009, we got this UAE project and uh, not only UAE project, but uh, we started to do what Argon was doing in 1950s. Help others. 
teach them so that we set up our own international nuclear school in Korea, and we opened that school to uh, countries where interest exists for nuclear power. Well, uh, there were many changes in this uh, uh, process. As you know well, TMI, Extent happened in 1979, and uh, this is why we, uh, our idea of standardization was able to get the uh, right attention from the government. And we had an intensive operational, operation training program. After Chernobyl for accident, we uh, emphasize safety culture, safety engineering, and uh, we all, of course, joined the uh, safety convention. Then Fukushima uh, Daiichi accident happened uh, 2011. Two years, no less, about uh, one year and about four months later, after we signed the UAE project, and uh, we emphasized on the engineering-based decision-making. Remember that uh, during uh, Fukushima's, the prime minister of Japan was a physicist, but J Japanese hierarchy of decision-maker uh, did not uh, allow the uh, decisions by the expert. So we looked at decision-making process so that uh, the best expert on uh, uh, the engineering issues of MPP should make the decision. And then we also looked up the beyond the design basis extent. Now we do have some, another challenge, that is anti-nuclear politics. Because we elected a new uh, government in uh, May, and uh, it happened to be anti-nuclear. Uh, but uh, I'm telling our people, this is great opportunity for nuclear people. Why? Because anti-nuclear politics by the government opened uh, the ears of our people. What's going on? Because we thought we exported the nuclear power plant to UAE, and now government is saying anti-nuclear. What is the real truth? So we are giving lectures, and we're invited to the uh, preachers' meetings, and uh, uh, you know, uh, ladies' uh, league. So we are explaining the essence of nuclear power. So in the long run, I believe, I believe we will have really solid support from the public. Because, as we heard, uh, nuclear power is not against renewables, but it's, they go side by side. And we have to be concerned about global warming and Korea. A brain-based nation should be a friend to a number of uh, developing countries. So this is what uh, uh, we are trying to do it. Of course, uh, uh, many years we got strong governmental support, but now uh, we have a challenge, and this challenge awakens a new uh, horizon for, for us. So uh, we are doing this. Now, UAE project is very timely, very important for not only Korea, for many countries. Well, uh, as you know well, it is the largest power project in the history of mankind. For APR 1400, Altogether, 5.6 gigawatt is built. And uh, uh, so far, I can tell you the entire project 
should be on time and uh, within the budget. And uh, it was uh, a joint project between a, a, a nation which came through uh, uh, development and to a nation which had only one nuclear engineer when they started the uh, nuclear power project. Let me show you some pictures. Now these are people, young people. After we got the uh, winning uh, uh, contract from UAE, in Korea, there are really people, many people never believed, oh, UAE, that's a European market, so French should win. And uh, uh, there were US, Japan uh, joint venture team, and uh, how could you beat them? But it was these young people who worked very hard and who studied hard, and uh, they are still working uh, for this UAE project. It says, we must do it, and uh, this is first nuclear power plant export. Let's go to UAE. Now, the next slide shows a 2014 picture, first unit and second unit going on. Uh, and the people were really excited to look at it. The next slide shows last year's picture, one, two, three, four, all going up. Now, today, even number four has done finished. So uh, we, we are making it uh, this, uh, by the time uh, uh, 2020 comes, uh, we think uh, we will finish all four units by that time, uh, on time. Now, as I said, after Argonne, we said we should work with uh, other nations. So uh, we set up uh, CAPCO International Nuclear Graduate School in 2012. We already uh, trained more than 200 uh, middle-class uh, career engineers from over 30 nations. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, school is located at Kori, the first MPP site in Korea. Now, I, I am very uh, excited with this because we provide free tuition, free room and board. Why? We were given that kind of benefits from the United States and Argonne National Lab long time ago. And it's time for us to do something in, in return. That's what we are doing. So like uh, if you go to Kenya, uh, almost uh, uh, 30 uh, middle class Kenyans finish schooling from here. This is a two-year project. And uh, uh, we, we, had, we say we do have a unique concept in, at King's. A unique concept, we, have, uh, we are go, making, trying to make a world-class graduate school. And we are specializing in project-based team learning, because it's a team learning, not individual, not just uh, uh, to, uh, uh, you know, student to Koreans. So every team should have Koreans and uh, uh, overseas student. And then uh, learning is through execution of project. So they, uh, uh, faculty members are not uh, teaching, but they are working together with the student. And it's uh, international, so en entirely in English. Uh, and then we have uh, joint programs conducted. Now, uh, in Korea right now, we are running 24 units in operation five units in construction. Uh, 
uh, about 22% uh, uh, of our total generating capacity is nuclear, and uh, uh, the generation itself over 30%. Now, uh, the, the reference plant of uh, uh, UAE uh, APR 1400 Shingori 3, and this Shingori 3 is, has been running very well, and the Shingori 4 is uh, uh, going through acceptance test, and uh, we, we will operate uh, start operation. Now, KHMP, which is the operator of Korean nuclear power plant, is running all source situation room. Now, I'm excited with this because using this uh, information technology, all 24 reactors running in Korea on the real time at the headquarters of KHMP, we can monitor. If any uh, subsystem of this uh, nuclear power reactor is off uh, the optimum performance, we can immediately see not only at the site, but also headquarters. At the headquarters, we have groups of uh, experts long, uh, who have long-term experience, so that if there is any yellow signal, not only at the site, but at the headquarters, we monitor. So superintendent of uh, uh, power station is not uh, uh, making lonely decision together with the expert. And they, they can ask questions each other and it is a very uh, uh, interesting uh, uh, practice. And uh, we have uh, uh, early warning system, and we have fast response system, and emergency response preparedness, and uh, all this. We do more than that. We have uh, uh, research reactors. Now you are, uh, you know very well uh, because this is the place, and uh, uh, for research reactors, our research reactor Hana Ro uh, is now uh, not only in Korea but in Jordan. We built Jordan, and also we refurbished the Dutch uh, research reactor using Hana Ro technology. And then small modular reactor, SMART, which I mentioned, we have been developing it. And uh, uh, interestingly, we have a cooperation with Saudi Arabia. And this SMART technology, which is a, a very uh, passive uh, hydrogen removal system, and uh, we do have a huge containment building to have uh, enough uh, reserve against any, ex any extent. And then we do have minimized uh, fear failure uh, features and uh, passive thing. Saudi Arabia and the Korean joint team is making detailed design of this smart. And then we will be building first two reactors in uh, Saudi Arabia, and uh, we are uh, working with the human capability build up with the Saudis, and uh, we want to have a joint uh, international uh, marketing. Well, we do more than that. We have started the fusion uh, research uh, uh, in 1955. Uh, many people at the time questioned because the uh, U.S. was uh, uh, sort of uh, folding up uh, fusion. Why do you want to go in? When, as a minister, I convinced that fusion research is really a convergence uh, research program with a multi, multi uh, 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 key technologies. So this is the best way of uh, uh, training future 
and engineers and the scientific people. Well, ITER came on and uh, they saw the K-STAR, Korean Superconducting Tokomo Advanced Reactor, and those people who built these uh, fusion facilities are now working at Cadarache in France. And uh, uh, I'm very uh, encouraged with their performance because uh, after all, fusion research will continue on. It's not only, it will benefit not only fusion, but also other areas of research. Now, for example, superconducting uh, uh, magnets we are now providing to this ETA. And uh, uh, K-STAR and the ETA are now uh, being uh, one running, the other one under construction. And the, we hope that this will show the uh, way. Also, we have done our waste storage, this CORAD facility, and uh, these are uh, for small and medium waste uh, storage running, and uh, we hope we will continue on uh, uh, to convince uh, not only Koreans but international working together, we can handle uh, radioactive waste successfully. Now, we have a future coming. There are uh, uh, research work going on on sodium fast reactors, and then uh, we, we are also research going on nuclear hydrogen uh, production, and uh, as I mentioned, smart program will uh, be uh, uh, progressing, and then we will continuously improve APR 1400. We call it APR plus, and then advanced fuels will be used. Of course, there are many issues, uh, key issues in nuclear power generation. Yes, we did a standardization. We will continue on improving safety engineering, and we, of course, pay safeguard and we will uh, continue on professional development of our people, and uh, uh, we have to think about security. All those issues you are very well aware of. But what we do is for the future, and we are committed in nuclear power. And the Korea itself is trying to show that a small nation, a poor nation, can do uh, this kind of a development which made our economic development, which is called the Han River, successful. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you in helping us to develop our capability. And the nuclear technology is not national, it's global, and we should work together continuously so that uh, our science-based uh, civilization will benefit not only people in the advanced nations, but those people who are starving and who are suffering in developing nations. Most important thing is we have to give the hope so uh, I'm trying to tell this you know, hope and the sharing with all uh, those people who have a, a, a commitment in making themselves better for the future. I thank you once again for giving this uh, wonderful opportunity to meet you and uh, just introducing our uh, uh, nuclear experience. Argon was the first place of global nuclear uh, development through atoms for peace. Of course, you hear a lot from North Korean program, but in, in due time, we'll go uh, uh, the, the road toward atoms for peace. Thank you.